hey guys welcome back to my channel yes <laughs> i have been fighting myself and i keep asking myself valen should i make this video should i let them know because i mean i made a video recently where i talked about the fact that six months upon my graduation about six months after graduation i am still yet to find a full-time job so uh i was like at a point where i felt like should i tell them that i now have a job and guys this job is not a full-time job it is actually a contract job so i wasn't sure if i should share the news um since it's not actually a full-time job but then again i feel like you know i've been making um a series recently about job search in the usa and i feel it's something that you people should also know about um learn about and just to also share my journey because withholding such an information just wasn't right with my conscience in a way because i feel like i mean i share everything with you people so you have become a part of my family i can't keep things away from you um entirely so yeah that's why we're doing this video but again it is good news and i am very excited and i am grateful to god that i do have this particular job so in this video i'm going to share with you how it happened how i got the job how you know everything happened from beginning to the end so i want you to please ensure that i watch the video in full because you never know you never know the tip that would help you find a job you never know one thing that could you know be that thing that would be very useful to you whether you are in that phase right now or you'll be there in the future everything is very important and that's why you know sometimes i find it very hard to just keep things away from you people but again if you're new here you're welcome and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much my name is valen Osse, and you already know that i share my experiences here as an international student in the united states of america so if you haven't subscribed ensure that you subscribe to my channel um, join this happy family of mine okay and before we also you know proceed i'd like for you to ensure that you join our telegram group which is a community of aspiring and current international students where you can communicate and network with other people and have direct access to me as well and you can also subscribe to my mailing list where i send out never heard before stories about my journey here in the united states and useful information that do not make it to youtube so ensure that you join that mailing list by clicking the link in the description down below also ensure to follow us on all of our social media platforms facebook um, instagram twitter you know even on our website as well ensure that you are engaging with this content ask all your questions in the comments down below drop your video ideas down below as well and i'll do my best to make those videos available for you and even answer your questions and if you're somebody who's about to start your study abroad journey you don't know how to start you're confused you're stuck anywhere or you are a current international student and you're finding it hard to succeed in your academics or even navigate your way here you know or strategize you can book a consultation with me and i'll help you um you know solve that problem for you and help you strategize to strengthen your weaknesses and become an exceptional international student so that being said, let's move on into today's video because I can't wait to speed it. So um, let me go down memory lane a little bit. If you are following me, if you are an OG on this channel, if you are a true to silver light, if you are a true serial, you know that I have mentioned in a couple of my videos that I started my job search in around October year. And so during that time, it was my final semester at uab but i started applying for jobs and reaching out to people and that was pretty much the time that um this recruiter reached out to me about a potential job offer and we spoke i also recently made a video where i talked about you know my experience dealing with recruiters being ghosted and everything so just ensure to watch that video search through my channel for that video so that you can understand more about that that journey itself because you need to really know what it is like so she reached out to me i remember and then we talked about my um, my past experience my current experience what i was doing and how it is related to the particular role that i was um, being you know considered for so after 
that first interview with the recruiter she proceeded to um, reach out to the hiring manager for that company that I was supposed to be um, working for and we set up like a zoom meeting for a zoom interview for 30 minutes right and i booked and i shared it for it which is usually what they do so whenever you speak with your recruiter even the recruiter herself or if he's a guy even the recruiter if whether it's a guy or a girl they will send you a link for you to book you know an appointment um for his uh, you know a phone screen or a zoom call whatever and when that is done they'll also speak with the hiring manager and then they'll also book like um you know a zoom session with the hiring manager or even a phone session it depends as well so i did that so on the day of the interview i absolutely researched and did all my work i did my homework so guys if you're also somebody that is in the phase of job searching and you don't know what to do you need help you need guidance you can as well book a consultation with me and i'll share my tips and strategies with you as well so ensure that you click the link in my description down below and i'll be very glad to help you so that happened it was a very wonderful um, interview session i prepared I was prepared so i knew so much and again it was a role that is related to what i was doing at the uab computer forensics and research laboratory so for me i was pretty excited about the role we, we spoke and it was you know like wonderful but what happened was at the end of that interview i you know when and you know they are done with an interview the hiring manager has asked you all the questions that they want to ask you then they'll ask you oh do you have anything to say and be ready to ask questions be ready not just to ask the regular questions you want to ensure that you're asking the right questions so one of the questions that i now ask i don't know was that you know i want to know if they sponsor you know um, international students and i don't know if that was the right move for me because i think now that i think about it it was after that time that I was ghosted <laughs> I'm going to get to that so um, I asked that question and unfortunately the hiring manager wasn't even you know experienced she didn't know so much about um, sponsorship in terms of international students and so it was strange to her she didn't have an, an answer for me and then she's like okay she's going to reach out to the the CEO of the company to find out what you know is going to happen right because i remember that when i asked that question she was like mm, what what is that you know what are you talking about what visa are you using and then i now started you know explaining to her and i think that's you know in my mind i'm like oh my god i shouldn't have even asked the question but the truth is whether i had asked the question or not at some point we would have gotten to that you know place where i would still be like i need sponsorship so even if i didn't bring it up and i get the role the truth remains or the fact remains that i need sponsorship so how would i go about it if i don't ask or if you know i'm not they're not even aware that something like that happens i'll just waste my year or years with them and still be stranded so i just feel like i didn't do anything wrong i don't know but that's what i think so um that happened and during the interview it was such a beautiful interview like it felt like she was going to hand me the job there and then do you understand because it was just so good she loved my energy she loved my you know my experience what i was bringing to the table and everything and i seem i seem knowledgeable about what they were looking for like i checked all their boxes and everything so after that you know segment of questioning and everything it did not like she was like okay i'm like can i when will i hear back from you she said um you know in about two weeks so i waited for about two weeks and i did not really hear back from her and i was also communicating with my recruiter I remember that i've not heard back from her i want to know what's going on any updates i didn't hear back from her and i didn't hear back from the recruiter <laughs> unfortunately so i didn't hear back from anybody i sent emails and then because they reached out to me on linkedin so i also sent like messages on linkedin nobody was saying anything to me so i moved on right remember in my video where i talked about my experience with american recruiters and everything i was talking about the hurdle that comes with being hosted the hurdle that comes with you not knowing you know what to do at that point should you move on or not should you keep 
hoping and believing that something is going to happen so that was it for me i just did not know what to do and it's not like it was with this particular role alone like several roles like at the point i didn't even understand that it was a thing you know but over time i realized like oh my god it's like it's a culture it's a norm here so which is why i keep saying like you know these recruiters need to understand that even if you do it for like citizens or anything please ask for us internationals you have to be considerate because we're going through so so much so that happened i didn't hear back from them in fact i moved on like i already took my mind off that position took my mind off that road every time moved on because i wasn't hearing back from anybody so fast forward sometime around march i think around march some yeah sometime around march i got a call from this you know recruiter again and the thing is i'm sorry i saved up her number in my phone so when I got that call, I could actually see the name of the person that was calling me and I knew that it was that recruiter that was calling me. So I wasn't like, you know, acting like it's some old person. I was even thinking she was calling me to talk to me about the old um, role, you know, because I'm like, oh, maybe I've heard back from them. I'm like, oh, so that's like how many months after, you know, because I think we started that conversation in October or something, 2020. So she called me and then she introduced herself again. I'm like, no, I remember you. I remember you because I've been reaching out to you and I didn't hear back and everything. And then she was like, she should give me one story why she did not respond back to me. I accepted at least now you are calling me. So it's a good thing. So she told me about this new role. So guys, remember that when we spoke in 2020, it was about a different role. So she, she was that is not the role she called me again for this time. She now called to talk to me about a new role. So you see how you know networking or building contacts or anything can be very helpful. So even though that I was ghosted, or should I say, because I don't know if I should use say that I was ghosted then because she was the one that called me back so apparently I can't say I was ghosted by her because you know it but again it was for a new role or something so I, I really don't know what please tell me what it is in the comments down below but either way I feel like she remembered me her remembering me means something like you know she never forgot me or anything so I cannot say that she ghosted me so but she came and told me about you know a different role that there's this role and she has my resume and she feels like i fit into the role perfectly and she also mentioned that it is a contract role so guys um if you want me to make a video about what a contract role is let me know in the comments down below because there's a difference between a contract role and a full-time role so there's a difference between a contract job and a full-time job there's a lot of differences so and i cannot be saying that here in this video i feel like i should make a different video for that and if you're interested in watching that video please let me know in the comments down below and ask me all the questions you want me to answer in that video and i'll have that ready as well so what happened was when she told me about the role she told me about the organization the company that i'll be working for potentially at the time i'm like okay yeah i'm really excited about this role because i mean it kind of you know um there's an intersection between that role and what i i am doing i was doing at the time so we talked about it and then she set up a you no know, she did she see whenever a recruiter calls you hmm, if it is for a different role best believe that they're going to it reassess you all over again they're not going to say oh because i spoke to you in 2020 october then they know everything about you it's going to be like a, a new phase of interview or assessment all over again so that's what happened she now um you know asked me questions about what i've been doing since we last spoke you know um we talked about the role and how i can come in and if it is something that i am interested in because a recruiter calling you does not mean that you have to accept that position or you have to even say oh i want to interview for this position you have to ask yourself is this something that i am interested in doing is this something that is in line with my career goal or is this something that i am passionate about so if you know those questions are not answered or if they are answered and 
they are all like yes you know your answers are yes to those questions then you can proceed but if it is a no 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 then you will not proceed with it so she asked me all those questions and it was something i was really excited about doing and again i was also looking at the fact that you know not only will i gain a new set of skill um for this new role it would also keep me engaged and you know productive and i want to be that person as well so we spoke she was fine and then she set up a meeting with this the hiring manager and the meeting with the hiring manager was like maybe two weeks after maybe a week after i can't remember um but we we did have the meeting and to be honest when we finished that interview with the uh, when i finished that interview with the recruit with the hiring manager she was absolutely like it was the first time that somebody had told me you know at not like the first time i mean most of my interviews that's what they say to me but it was the first time my like, person was like i really 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 liked you like she was just all out wanting me to know that she really really liked me my vibe everything and she's like i knew that i was going to get the role that day like i had that 110 20 percent assurance that i was going to get that role you know it is not necessarily the case when you go for other kind of interviews like you may have that 80 percent you know um assurance that okay they like me i'll get the role you have like 70 50 sometimes have, it depends on the outcome of the interview but for this one i had like one ten percent that i was going to get the role and then she was like ah you know what even made it very you know reassuring was her saying that when she saw my resume with the recruiter like when the recruiter has sent my resume to her she was like impressed with the resume so she was like did she tell you that i was impressed with your resume i'm like oh my god you know at that point you also don't want to be too you know too upfront like too receptive you want to be neutral because you never know anything can happen anything can happen until you get the offer it is not really yours until you get the job it is not really yours so you want to be careful as well so that you're not like oh my god i'm getting this job and then the job doesn't come you are you know devastated so i was also trying to you know have that balance so I was like yeah she told me which is true but then I was like yeah she she did tell me and I was you know just playing it calm so fast forward um she said she was going to get back to me in a week or so and I didn't hear back from her you know that week and everything but I was still keeping in touch with the recruiter I was reaching out she was the recruiter was also reaching out to me and we continuously you know had that one-on-one -on -one conversation um until um, the recruiter was even saying that after my interview because I actually had to send like a thank you note which is something that you have to do um, you know whenever you're done with an interview ensure that you send out a thank you note because it is very important you want them to remember you after an interview you want them to you know personalize your name know your face remember something that you have discussed during the interview that way they will remember you so I sent that thank you letter through the recruiter to her so um, the, she responded back and said that oh that she was the hiring manager was really impressed she was really happy about me that she the recruiter herself was like she also believes that i'm going to get an offer shortly like i'll be part of those that will get the offer i was like okay thank god so but i can continuously you know um i was still applying because then i also had like other interviews lined up like it was it has been back to back interview phase like god sometimes you just get tired like all you're thinking about is interview research doing this and it can be very exhausting as well so um after that what happened was she was supposed to get back to us like in, in two weeks or so but that did not happen they had like some sort of delay so you see why i say that you don't have to be too open because anything can happen so i was like not worried at that point oh my god what's gonna happen but finally she and the recruiter read back to me and said that they have given me an offer she just wants to know if i'm ready for the role if i'm willing to accept it like they told her to give me a verbal offer before the main offer so i'm like okay i and then that can i think about it i took my time to like she said yeah i have like 24 hours to think about it i took that 24 hours to think about it even though i already knew i was going to take the role but i just wanted to like talk to my guardian talk to a few persons and you know you just also want to know that you're doing the right thing so i did that and finally i accepted it verbally and you know until they now sent me my um 
my you know the formal letter the formal employment letter offer letter stating that i am now a fraud investigator so yeah so yeah in case you don't know already i'm a fraud investigator um for a bank so that's what i've been doing for a couple of weeks now and i am absolutely like i love my role i love what i'm doing i just love that i'm able to make impact i'm able to contribute towards you know fraud prevention if you know you know that you know me already you know that it's something that i'm passionate about and so i'm very glad that i now have this contract role the next question would be like ah oh, valid is a contract role what what next you know what next what this contract will what next which is why when i got the position i wasn't quite sure should i share this journey like uh, because i mean so that people don't think okay now i'm, I'm i have a contract rule and that's it no it doesn't end there it doesn't having a contract rule just doesn't end there there are other things that you have to think about there are factors you have to consider there are things that you have to keep doing even after you get a contract rule so I'll be sharing all of this journey with you as well on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. So if you have questions to ask about, you know, contract jobs, full-time jobs, this is the time for you to ask those questions because you don't want to get to that point and be like, okay, you are focused on getting a full-time job and the full-time job does not come. What then do you do? Do you sit and wait or do you take the contract, you know, job that comes in? And so this is what this video is about. I just wanted to share this with you guys that I now have a contract position as a fraud investigator with a bank and you know I'll keep updating you guys as new things unfold and maybe I'll make my next video might be day in my life as a fraud investigator and you know factors to consider before choosing a contract position and the differences between a contract position and a full-time position and anything in between so if you're interested please ensure that you're subscribed to my channel join my mailing list so that you can receive never heard before stories about myself yes and okay i'm also going to be sending out the questions that you can be asking recruiters when they call you or when you reach out to them as well in my next newsletter so please subscribe to my mailing list down below and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe and turn your post notification bell on so you are the first to get notified whenever i upload my content and if you haven't already please give us a huge thumbs up yes so that i know that you love what i'm doing and let me know if you watch this very part please comment down below that i will get my full-time job in the comments down below you are the real og so when you write that statement down it is you and i connecting and agreeing together that we're going to get a full-time job and when that happens we're going to refer back to this day and be like oh my god i just had faith and it happened so guys that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in my next video and until then i remain valuing also and i try to never give up and i hope that you do see